Makes sense. Okay, it's recording. Hello, my name is Wayne Gramlich, and this is going to be a uh, mini set of lectures on doing surface mount uh, printed circuit boards. Um, the uh, format of the class is going to be um, to use uh, do 15 minute lectures followed by some question and answer. These will be videoed and uploaded onto the net so that if anybody misses the class, uh, they can you know, go, go see the video on the net. Okay. Uh, the, oops. Let's move that someplace else. Um, the most important URL is right here. This is the class home page. HTTP colon slash slash gramlick. Dot net. That's G R A M L I C H dot net slant projects slant PCB underscore class slant. And if you want, you can type index.html, but it's not technically necessary. Okay, that's where all of the um, um, notes and video links and everything are going to show up. Okay, I have all of that content being recorded under um, in a Git repository so that people find typographical errors or stuff like that. They can clone it, fix it, and then you know, you know, ask me to push it back into the, the site and we can fix things up that way. Um, okay, without any further ado, let's uh, talk about what's going on. Our goal is to basically do printed circuit boards, okay? Uh, printed circuit boards, I don't know exactly know when they were developed, but they became quite popular in the 70s. And they used to all use uh, through-hole parts. That's these bigger parts here. And um, there used to be like warehouses full of people who were part of an assembly line, you know, soldering parts into boards. Um, and it was getting pretty expensive. Um, so, you know, an ingenuity came along and said, what would happen if we could somehow automate all of that? And that's what surface mount technology is ultimately all about, is they came with, with robots that could assemble printed circuit boards. Now, that's the high-end manufacturing is to do uh, surface mount. Um, and um, the uh, solution, I shouldn't say the solution, but the issue that we have to worry about is before you can go into high volume manufacturing, you need to make the first you know, 10 or 20 of them. And that's really what this class is about, is that those first 10 or 20. Okay, because around the time of making about 100 boards, you can ship the board off to China, okay, or other places, and they will uh, give you a bid and assemble it for you. They own the equipment, and they just rent the equipment out to you, okay. So that's kind of what, what we're doing. Um, the uh, basic process for doing uh, printed circuit boards is first to have the idea, you know, that's the light bulb that goes on over everybody's head. Um, so, for example, on this board, the, uh, the concept that we had was, wouldn't it be nice if we had, could um, um, have an Arduino that we could plug together on a bus? So this board is a busable Arduino. And so that's, that was the inspiration. So the next step on all of this is to decide what parts you're going to put on the board. So you have to find them. You have to uh, look at their cost. Okay. Uh, it's very easy to design a board that, with a part that is simply unavailable. Okay. So for example, the Atmel um, AVR parts have been a real struggle to get at times. Okay. And, that's, that's what the Arduino uses as, a, as an Atmel AVR, um, the 8-bit version. Now, they've got enough in production now, but for a while there, there were periods of time where you just, you just simply couldn't get them. Okay, 
So you want to make for sure that you can get the parts. And then you want to make for sure that you, um, you know, that it's all going to work. So you go from the idea and you try and figure out what the wiring is for your board. Okay. Um, and that's called schematic capture. And uh, I didn't bring any uh, schematics with me this time, but it's basically just sheets of paper where you have components and wires connecting between the components. And those wires correspond, those lines correspond to wires. Um, and once you've done that, the next part of the process is you um, do something called footprint selection. Okay. Footprint selection is basically deciding which version of a part you're going to use in your product. Okay, so you may have a microcontroller that comes in three different packages: ball bread array, you know, go wing, uh, dual inline package. You have to decide which package you're going to use, and there are lots of issues there. But ultimately, you've identified a part and a package that you're going to use. Okay. And then the next step is you uh, lay out the printed circuit board, okay? And you have to figure out where you're going to put your mounting holes, what your outline of your board is going to be, and all sorts of things like that. You have to make for sure that your wire traces are the right length, okay? Um, another issue is how many layers you're going to have on the board. I've never done anything other than two layer boards. But some people have to do four, okay? One of my friends said he did a 48-layer board once as a project, you know, as something he was paid to do. I, I find that simply appalling, but, um, you yeah, know, he probably had a good reason for doing that. Um, so, uh, the key thing about printed circuit boards is they're made out of uh, usually a fiberglass material. It's called FR4. There are other materials um, that aren't fiberglass. Um, and it starts off as two layers of copper. Uh, believe it or not, they actually drill the holes first, and then they stick the whole board in a vat of copper solution, and they uh, copper plate the uh, do additional electroplating to copper plate up. And that fills in the holes, and that's so you can have electrical conductivity through the boards. And then, after they've done that. They apply something called a resist to the boards, expose it to some light, and develop it just like they used to develop film. Film's getting, you know, a lot of people don't know about film anymore, but it used to be what we did. That's why we did all, all photography was with film. Um, and then they dip it in a vat of acid and etch away the, the, the copper, and you're left with these traces. And they're hard to see here. The back, board, back of the board's a little easier to see. Uh, you can see etched away copper traces. Then the next step is they apply something called a solder mask. That's this green stuff. The, the actual board isn't all that green, but the, the, um, the, the solder mask is. Mm. And then the solder mask is basically uh, helps us with the soldering process. And then the final step is we do artwork. Um, that's the, the um, white lettering you see on there, on the front and back here. And that is um, used to help with the assembly so that you can say, oh yeah, that's C, you know, that, that, that's capacitor 3, that's resistor 7, and, and stuff like that. So that's the manufacturing process. We don't do that, we ship them out to do that. We've, I've more recently been using um, Seed Studio, which is in China. They actually farm it out to another uh, vendor inside China, but we're, the service bureau we're using is Seed Studio. That's Seed with three E's. The link is on that page, so you don't have to, to take notes for the link. Um, and But you don't have to use Seed Studio. I've used Bulgaria, a place called Olamex. Uh, I've used a place up in Canada called Alberta Printed Circuits. Um, but anyway, we, we usually ship them out. Now, back in the, the good old days, we used to etch our own boards. Um, it's basically too hard to etch boards with this you know, that, that are this fine, so we don't even try anymore. Um, I'm not, I shouldn't say, some people try, but I've given up. Um, so we ship them out, they come back, and then we have to solder them, okay? And soldering surface mount boards is a skill you can learn. Um, 
It works best if you're young and have great eyesight. Um, the rest of us have to use a microscope. Um, so that's just the way it goes. Uh, and there's various levels of assembly. Uh, you can do it component by component, uh, where you put a part down there, dab some solder on, and solder up all, all the wires. Uh, that's very tedious. Um, some people are really, really good at it. Uh, I'm not. Um, there's another technology, technique uh, called solder paste, where you, you apply some uh, little balls of solder with flux mixed into it onto your board, and now you just place the parts on the board, and then you stick it into an oven. Okay, I use a toaster oven that I bought for twenty dollars, um, and then we uh, heat up the board. All the solder melts. All the parts get soldered onto the board, and, and away we go. Okay, once you have soldered the, the surface mount parts. You then have to solder the um, two-hole parts that we do that all by hand these days. It doesn't take that long. So these bigger parts that you see sticking up here with the, the pointy ends on them, those are, those are two-hole parts. And we just solder those on by hand. Um, and then you get to test the board. Okay, that means you power it up and everything. Um, one of the things we do is... We tend to put microcontrollers on a lot of these boards, and that's one of the reasons why I was pushed into doing surface mount was because microcontrollers come in these really fine pitch parts. Um, and I'm going to encourage people to actually do a microcontroller-based project in, as part of this class. Okay, so um, yeah, if you're going to do a microcontroller-based project, you want to, to do be able to debug it. So you have to be able to download code into it. And you have to be able to debug it. And the most common interface for debugging is something called JTAG. We'll get into that. That's what this connector is. This is my JTAG connector. Um, this is also my download connector. Uh, I use ARM processors. And they have something called a bootloader burned into each one of them. So I use that to actually do my uh, downloading. I download it over the same connector. So anyhow, I want, want to encourage people to do that. Um, if you don't have a project burning in your brain that you want to do, um, we've got a list of projects that we can, can walk, work through and see if any of them uh, tickle your, your fancy. Um, I am a big fan of modular electronics, um, robotics, mechanical, modular software. Uh, so this is a modular robotics bus that we put together. It's, it's these days we call it Maker Bus. Each one of these modules has an embedded microcontroller on it. It's hooked together with this ribbon cable. And um, if you want, we can, you know, we've got some modules that need to be laid out and put together that would fit onto this bus. It would be a, a good little project. Um, so that's that's kind of a uh, thing. But if you have something else you want to do, let's go for it. And the last thing I want to say is which design tool we're going to use. The one I'm familiar with is KiCad. It's 100% open source. I like it because it's open source. Um, it's got its rough edges. Uh, all, um, every CAD package has, it, has its rough edges. Um, but that's the one I, I will push and, and encourage people to use. Some people already are familiar with Eagle. That's fine. Go ahead, use Eagle. I'm not going to you know, tell you you have to use KiCad. Um, but be aware that I can't help you as much uh, with the, the, the finer details of, of Eagle because I simply have never used it. Okay. Can you spell that? Uh, Eagle? No. No, KiCad. K-I-C-A-D. By the way, if you go to this web page, there's, there's KiCad links on there. So I just uh, don't, don't, want, don't want to leave people in the dust. Okay. Um, so that, that's the, the idea behind KiCad. And I tend to sort of break things out into, you know, um, you know, KiCad has a, a Gerber viewing tool. I don't use theirs. I use, a, use one from uh, another design package called GEDA for GNU Engine Electronic Design Automation. Uh, the GERB, the GERB V program, I think, is far superior to the uh, KiCad Gerber viewer. Now, you don't know what a Gerber is? We'll get to that. Okay. Um,
So that's kind of all I wanted to, to do here is, is get over that. Remember, this is the home page. Okay, so this is where you go. And um, that, that sort of co covers most of the stuff I wanted to say here in, in terms of introductory material. So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to tell the video camera guy to hit the red button. Sayonara.